hi guys so welcome back to my channel so um today's video i'm gonna film in the car i'm currently at work and i'm on break um so i just thought i wanted to go ahead and film this video while i'm by myself yes we're gonna do it we're gonna do it um and this is going to be the birth story behind my first child my daughter i named her nyla her name is nyla raquel that was her name um and she was born almost three years ago now um her birthday is august 8th 2017 and she was born at 19 weeks and one day i think she was 19 weeks one day or 19 weeks exactly um so let's take it on back to 2017 and what happened with my daughter so i think it was the day before the 7th um i was laying in bed i think it was like in the morning i'm just laying in the bed or whatever and i just feel a big gush of water so i get up and I was like, man, I know I, I, you know, like I know I didn't just pee on myself or whatever. So the bed was soaked, y'all. And it was like water just running down my legs. So I called my mom and I'm like, um, something not right. Cause you know, I just feel like a big gush of water. There's um water just dripping down my legs or whatever. So she ended up, she came home and she ended up taking me to the hospital um, down at UH. So we went to the hospital or whatever. So they, you know, when you go down there, they put you in triage and ask you all these questions and or whatever. So they did a heartbeat. She had a good heartbeat. They did like the, you know, they do the little exam where they stick the um, little swab in you and if it turns a different color, it's, you know, for amniotic fluid or whatever. And she was like, it's pink, but it's not all the way pink. And I guess they sent it to the lab or something to see if it was amniotic fluid. And again, they took their, they did take her heartbeat and her heartbeat was good. Um, but I think where they messed up was they didn't do an ultrasound to see how much fluid was actually around the baby. So um, fast forward, at that point I was on vacation for my job. And the next day I did go back to work. So towards the end of the day, uh, my stomach my stomach started cramping. Like my stomach was cramping, just like you know period cramps. But you know how they talk about you know your uterus is growing, you know round ligament pain. At that point, you know I'm you know first time, not the first time mom, but my first time being pregnant. So all of this stuff is new to me. So um. My stomach is cramping, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just go home and take a bath. But at the time, at our house, you know, our water, our hot water wasn't working, so I had to go to my dad's house to take a bath or whatever. So I get in the tub, and at that point, when I got in the tub, they got, it was like worse. And you know, now that I think about it, looking back, you know, I didn't put two and two together that I couldn't have contractions because it was like on and off, on and off. So, um, I got into, you know, how you go like this, back and forth in the water. It, it wasn't helping. And another tip off to me that I didn't notice at the time, um, I was taking Tylenol, like popping it like it's candy. Nothing. It wasn't working. So, I got out the shower and I'm just laying on the couch and, you know, the pain, it was like on and off. I was, like I said, it was on and off, but it was coming back back to back back to back and my sister like are you okay i said no you know like you know i'm in a lot of pain and i just want to lay down so you know i couldn't drive us back home so my sister drove us back home so i got home i stripped y'all completely butt ass naked down and laid in the bed all right so at that point i kept feeling like i had to go to the bathroom so I went to the bathroom, nothing came out, but you know, when I wiped it, something, there wasn't no blood, there was no nothing. So when I went to lay back down, at this point, I kept telling my mom, like, you know, I'm in a lot of pain, um, my stomach is hurting. I don't think I really put an emphasis on how much pain was I was in, because at that point I was thinking that it was normal. And I was asking my sister, you know, for a heating pad, you know, something to relieve the pain. Um, so I'm laying in bed, y'all, 
and this is so crazy tmi nasty whatever but i just felt like i was peeing on myself and at that point i was in so much pain i couldn't get up it was like i just let myself pee on myself i'm like i just clean myself up um in the morning mind you at this point it's about 11 o'clock at night so the room is completely dark so i get up and i was trying to um I was trying to make it to the bathroom. So by the time I got up and made it to the doorway, I felt like something was coming. And at that point, she, she, was, she was coming out. So at that point, I got up, I almost made it to the door. I'm holding onto the dresser. At that point, I felt like something was coming. So I squatted and it, I, did, I was not pushing. It was like my body was just pushing. My body was doing the pushing. And my body just pushed her on out and I had squatted and I caught her with my hand. At that point, I started um, screaming for my family. I kept saying, my baby, my baby. <laughs> her in my hand and she was, just, she was like the size of my hand, she was the size of my hand. And um, so my mom, she came in there <sighs> so they wrapped her up in a towel and you know I tried to make my way down the stairs cause mind you you know she was still attached to me so I could feel like something was hanging um so that's when they called 911 and at that point you know I'm hysterical I'm just crying y'all I'm just crying 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 and um my I do remember seeing her moving around a little bit. Um, my sisters did say, you know, she was moving around. Um, and when the ambulance got there, they did cut the umbilical cord. And I feel like they took her from me. And I feel like then they should have gave her to me and let her be on me until we got to the hospital. Because I'm thinking, okay, you know, we can go to the hospital. And then, you know, they'll try to save her and all the other stuff. But, you know, I didn't. You know, I didn't know at the time, you know, she was, she was too little. There was, there was nothing they could do for her. So, um, and it's crazy enough, y'all. I did not know the gender. My, um, anatomy scan was the following Monday. So I had one week until my anatomy scan and I was going to find out it was a girl. Um, so when I when we got to the hospital, they took me down to the ER and it, I felt like it was like straight Grey's Anatomy. People swarmed me. It was so many people, it was overwhelming. And um, they asked me, did you want to see her? I should have said yes, because they was like, oh. So I guess, you know, she was moving around. And I do feel like now I'm looking back again, I should have seen her and held her, because, you know, I could have seen my baby alive. Because um, when I did see her again, she was not alive. Um, so I'm not sure how long she was alive for. So they took her from me and they gave them to the people at the hospital, which I feel like that's that's another part that was really upsetting when I think about it, that they should have gave her to me. So, you know, I could have spent whatever little time I had with her, you know, while she was alive. So they took me up to the, um, the what is it called, y'all? Delivery floor. Because at that point, um, the placenta was not delivered. So I had to, um, they was giving me like Pitocin and stuff to speed it up so that I could um, deliver the placenta. And that is what I did. And uh, meanwhile, she asked me, did I know the gender? I told her no. And she told me it was a girl. And when she told me it was a girl, y'all, I was hysterical. I just started bawling my, oh my God, I cried so hard and she told me it was a girl because you know I, all i wanted was girls all i wanted to be was a girl mom but i'm a boy mom now i do have a, a soon to be eight month old son, son now so i didn't have my rainbow baby but um you know all i wanted was a girl that's all i wanted was a girl 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 all i talked about was a girl and you know that was my girl i had my girl and when she told me it's a girl i'd have cried either way if it was a boy or if it was a girl um and I was just like, I was hysterical. And then um, by that point, my sisters was there. My parents was there. Um, my best friend came and my boyfriend at the time, he came with his friends. Um, they brought her back to me. They had took some 
pictures. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm gonna sh probably insert a couple, but I've never shown her face online. Um, just like her feet and side profiles. And I'll probably never will, cause you know, I probably never will because that's just something so private and I don't want to expose my daughter in that way. Um, so I, I, I probably would never show those pictures online. Um, but she was so tiny. They put her on a purple hat and she had like on a little purple knit diaper. Like some people knitted those in like a little purple knit blanket and she was all wrapped up. Um, they did take pictures of her and different angles and stuff like that. And I got to, um, spend time with her, you know. I'll probably, I'll probably insert a picture of my mom holding her. So she did hold her. Everybody did see her. Um, at that point, I don't know. At the time, I'm really weird. You know, I just sat in bed like I was okay, but I really wasn't. Um, so when my mom, when everybody left, and it was just me and my mom, I think that's when I really, I really started crying. Like, I literally cried all night. Like, literally, I didn't go to sleep till 5, like, in the morning. I was like, I don't know, I cried myself to sleep. I cried the whole night. And then they moved me up to, like, the recovery floor. And I was able to take her with me. So, it was like, you know, I got to spend time with her. And she's, you know, she got to spend the night with me, you know, while she's living in bed with me and everything. I'm trying not to start boohoo crying, but um, she got to spend time with me. Um, so then the next day, the next day was the hardest. And that's when they um, kind of sort of start talking about like you know their ideas of what happened. Um, definitely post not postpartum. Um, that's definitely premature premature labor. And the possibility of um, incompetent cervix is when, um, as the baby gets older or get, start to weigh more, um, your cervix is not strong enough to hold the weight of the baby and you'll start to dilate, which will throw you into premature labor. And it can also let infection in when your um, cervix starts to open. And at that point, I did have an infection in my uterus. It's, it's called choreo something choreo something uh, oh excuse me y'all i'll put it across the screen but that's i did have an infection in my uterus so that ended up happening and it was talking about that checking me and lots of other stuff and then um that's when the people from the morgue came and calling the um, funeral home and i couldn't do that when i don't know y'all i just held the phone in my my hand and i just started again bawling y'all i was crying so hard I, I it was like i was crying so hard i couldn't even see straight that's how bad i was crying like i was crying so hard it was everything was a blur so my mom my parents basically took care of that my mom called the nurse the, the nurse home, called the funeral home and um and my dad set everything up because i did end up getting her cremated um when i get home i will insert right here so you're yeah, calling the i don't know a lot of it it was just very 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 overwhelming especially you know you're it's all fresh and it's new and you know you got to call them more or they're talking about stuff that's happening and then at the point you know it came time you know that I had to leave and it was time to leave I cried even more because I didn't want to leave her I wanted her to come home with me and it didn't make it any better because on the same floor you know you had women walking around with their babies and I'm leaving mine you know my baby didn't get to come home with me and y'all I'm trying so hard so yeah, then it came in time for me to leave and I had to say my goodbyes. And I wanted her, I think, yeah, I think I wanted her to just take her when I went into the bathroom because I just, I couldn't handle it. 